Hey guys, uh, welcome to my channel, um, Daniel's Custom Guitars. Uh, it's the first video that I'm doing for you guys. Um, I've been playing guitar pretty much my whole life, uh, mainly because my dad has uh, been building guitars um, for over 40 years, so before I was born. And, um, you know, luckily I grew up in a household with a, a guy that built guitars, so there were guitars everywhere. Uh, and I've, I've had a chance to play a, a lot of different types of guitars, everything from you know, custom acoustics to arch tops to, uh, to one-off electric guitars, which um, you know, definitely I took advantage of as a kid and uh, you know, I still avidly play to this day. Um, the one biggest regret I probably had though was um, I've never made a guitar with my dad. So we're going to kind of go through a build tutorial um, for you guys on how to build a guitar. Uh, the first I think, series we're going to do is going to be built on uh, a kit, uh, something we got from stewmac.com. Um, and kind of just to get my feet wet, to, to learn a lot of the techniques, um, and then move forward to building a fully custom uh, acoustic from the ground up, uh, and then hopefully a fully custom arch top. This is going to be something that I think you guys can learn while I'm learning. Um, you know, I've never done this before. Um, I've obviously seen my dad do some stuff in the shop, but uh, I haven't done the work myself. So, um, you know, he's a professional. He's been doing this for 40 years. I'll be learning and you know asking legitimate questions because I've you know I've never done this. And so uh, hopefully for you guys that are looking for tips and advice, uh, recommendations, you know, you'll, you'll gather a lot from this process as, uh, as I go through it myself. So um, if you guys have any questions, um, you know, any ideas on stuff you'd like to see, um, any, you know, stuff that you would like to be covered in greater detail, uh, you know, I, I will be following the comments. I know my dad will be as well, and so expect some replies from him uh, for anybody that has any serious questions or needs some help on something. Um, you know, he follows a form called MIMF, uh, which is the Musical Instrument Makers Forum, so I think this will be a, a good outlet for him to share some info uh, with you guys that maybe, you know, haven't found that resource, which um, if you haven't checked it out, that's an absolutely fantastic resource tons of professional builders uh, on there kind of sharing their tips, tricks, ideas, uh, new techniques and stuff. So let me know uh, what you guys would like to see. You know, obviously uh, this is for me doing this process that I want to document, but uh, you know, I want you guys to get uh, some benefit out of it as well. Uh, and if you like the video, you know, please hit like and subscribe. We'll have a lot more coming up for you. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it. So here's a look at my dad's workshop that we'll be uh, building the guitars in. Um, it's a retrofitted two-car garage. And as you can see, lots of equipment everywhere. Um, custom jigs, my dad has designed to do a lot of different stuff. Big stockpiles of wood he's been collecting for uh, 40 years. And a custom built paint booth. Here's my guitar. Which did a black and then uh, sand back on that and put some blue on it doing finishing lacquer on it there's the, there's the blue stain you used. yeah normally you'll dilute this stuff and you just put it straight on there and one coat honestly was all that was needed now the black I think took three coats or something well though yeah the one the first one wasn't very very uh, dark so that didn't really count so about two good stains of black and then sand it back and that was a lot of work but you can see look it just pops and it looks great so then I left the back and sides just natural kind of wanted to have that two color tone on it, it looks really classy I look good with the hardware on there so 
So um, I figured I'd show you guys kind of a uncut video of uh, the guitar finishing process. This is actually, you know, the first lacquer on uh, the guitar. You know, we've only stained the top. Um, like like I was said, you know, we did a black stain, um, sanded that back which I did by hand, and then one coat of undiluted blue dye uh, from Jack Goddard. Um, so this literally, you know, natural sides, top has three levels of stain on it, two blacks, sanded down, and then one blue. And you have to be very careful when you're doing your first coat of lacquer making sure you don't have any runs, um, you know, no streaks, especially on the top where you have dye, you don't want that uh, to, you know, to, to get streaks and runs in it. Uh, it's, a, it's pretty hard to correct later on. So you can see here, these are kind of light coats, um, being very careful. And I kind of wanted to give you guys just an uncut, you know, video where you can watch how it's being sprayed, uh, the amount of spray, and, and kind of the time that you need to take when you're doing this process. So if you guys have any questions, you know, let me know down in the comments. So you can see uh, my dad looking at the guitar really closely just to make sure, obviously, that uh, there's no bleeding of the dye uh, on the top especially. That's, that's where the, the dye you know, when you're putting on a first coat of lacquer, the, uh, the, the dye is not sealed in. And if you spray too much lacquer, you can actually cause the dye to run off and bleed, uh, which, you know, is, is a way to, to ruin the finish on it. So that first coat is a light sealer coat. Uh, you're trying to get that uh, just to kind of tack and seal in the, the blue dye especially. And uh, making sure as well that on the, the back and the sides, which are natural wood, that uh, you're not having any bleeding or running by doing a light tack coat. And uh, also, I just wanted to mention, you know, this is obviously in a ventilated area. Uh, it's very well ventilated. There's a ventilation shaft that goes all the way through the roof with a big fan that's pulling most of that lacquer but you should always be wearing a respirator, even on a first coat uh, like this, you know, very light coat, not a whole lot of lacquer being sprayed. It, it still, you know, definitely um, required that you wear a respirator. Uh, asking my dad about it later, he just said that he got really excited about doing the, the initial coats on it and kind of jumped into it. Uh, not thinking and, and didn't even realize he hadn't put on a respirator. So um, obviously a mistake, but you know, we did eight, 10, 12 coats of lacquer on here and every other uh, subsequent uh, lacquer finishing was done wearing a respirator, uh, even in the same ventilation booth. So make sure you guys are wearing your respirator uh, just for safety caution. So that was a two to three minute long time lapse there, just letting that first coat dry just a little bit. Um, going back to the second coat, we can apply this one a little bit heavier, still being cautious 
that you're not getting any streaks, any runs, uh, and definitely not having any bleeding on the die on the top. But this, you know, coat being heavier, you want to make sure that you get it wet enough as well that it will dry flat, uh, that you're not going to have a uneven coat. And so it's kind of a fine balance between making sure you're spraying wet enough that the lacquer will dry correctly, that uh, also you're not spraying too much where you get any streaks and runs. So second coat, you can go a little bit heavier and then let that dry you know, overnight. Some people let that dry for, for 48 hours and then come back and you can do you know, heavier and heavier coats as you get to the kind of finishing lacquer phase. Here's a look at the finished guitar with about eight coats on it. We'll let it dry for a week and then do some polishing in upcoming videos. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching, guys.